We've been broken too long. We're going to read more on that, but let me uh, continue, though. A man lacks the understanding because now you're breaking up a family. You're breaking up a home when you do that. When you do that, come on. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. And when you do that, you destroy your own soul because that was the law. God, thou should not commit adultery. Thou should not commit adultery. It's an astonishment of heart when you have boys growing up to be men, but they're not really men. Right. They're betas. Right. They've never been taught how to take care of a woman. And a woman never been taught how to love a husband. Right. I was referencing Scar Lip. She said, what the F I look like telling a nigga good morning? As a matter of fact, you're supposed to greet a person with respect. But no one taught her respect because she's been hurt all her life. That's the result of single parent households. Not having a man and a woman in the house. And then you got a man growing up being emotional, being effeminate. Want to beat up on the woman. Etc. etc. You name it. Let's get Proverbs 6 and 32. Let's deal with more on marriage. It's important. It's important. Again, I'm going to reference the, the woman. She have multiple baby daddies. And then she want a man to pay for her mistakes. Now, nah, son, I'm looking for a good man now. After I've been ran through. Why should I take care of you and your kids? They're not going to respect me anyway. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 32. But, as a matter of fact, she's going to say, I can't whoop the kids. What you mean? You can't whoop these kids, but you want me to take care of these kids. You want me to feed these kids, but I can't discipline them? You crazy. That's an astonishment right there. Am I lying? Good. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Come on. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Read it from the top. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. So it says a person who commits adultery, they lack the understanding of God's laws. Because they don't consider the repercussions. If you commit adultery with another man's wife, now you broke up a family. We've been broken too long. We're going to read more on that, but let me uh, continue, though. A man lacks the understanding because now you're breaking up a family. You're breaking up a home when you do that. When you do that, come on. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. And when you do that, you destroy your own soul because that was the law. God, thou should not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Come on. A wound and a dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. And that's what you're going into right now. A wound and a what? And his reproach shall not be wiped away. Because that's a big shame for you to get your ass whooped because you was messing with somebody's wife. You can always go be known as that brother who got his ass whooped because you messed with somebody's wife. You don't want to be that brother. Come on. Verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Come on. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest consent, though thou givest many gifts. Because a real man, he, he going to be very upset if you smashing his wife. Right. He going to want to fight. Right. And that's why a reason why a lot of things happen, like a murder related to infidelity. Right. You see about all the time on First 48 on the news. Why? Because he messed with somebody's wife. Bring it up. And now he followed him at the job and now he killed her and the dude. Right. Think about OJ. Think about OJ. Right. They was divorced, but guess what? She was still getting alimony from him and still bringing, messing with this dude. And I got to pay alimony and you still smashing somebody? You having a good time with my money? I'm going to kill you and her. I'm going to kill you and her. A man, he ain't going to put up with that. So that's why marriage is honorable. That's another way how God could judge you. He'll bring you to shame. He'll do it in the broad daylight when you're coming out the gas station. Or a matter of fact, coming out of Walmart. 
in a full parking lot. Now you're going to be known as that dude who got his butt whooped because you messed with another man's wife. The Bible said don't do that. That's why he says marriage is honorable. And the bed undefiled, but a whoremongers and adulterous God will judge you. So you understand that? You don't want to be on that, that end. Neither do you want to be on the end if someone, if y'all get married, you don't want nobody messing with her, sleeping around on her, right? Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Because you must know this when you get married. Let's get Matthew, um, is it 19? I think, right, Matthew 19. Um, Seth, before. 1948? 1948? 1945. 1945. Let's get that. That's the one? Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they be twain shall be one flesh. Good, good. So when y'all get married, y'all should be one flesh. One flesh. Marriage is all about, by the way, sister. Read out uh, verse 9. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. Read that part again. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. No, read verse 9 again from the top. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put his wife, Put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery. So by the law says, the only way you're supposed to put away your wife is for fornication. Because guess what? You're going to have trouble in the flesh, right? You're going to have issues in your marriage. But that's no reason for you to want to get a divorce. But if she committed fornication and cheat, then that's the only way. Because remember, y'all want flesh. Whatever problem y'all have, y'all supposed to work it out. Let's get Ephesians 5. Y'all understand that, right? So we deal with marriage. Except you for fornication. Because you're going to have trouble in the flesh. You're going to have problems. But that's why y'all supposed to agree. Remember, can two walk together except they agree? If y'all agree, y'all should be able to work problems out, right? It's fair to say, if y'all agree, y'all should work it out. Ephesians 5, and let's start at uh, verse 26. Let's start there. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Let's get uh, verse uh, 20, 20, 21. 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. So when you get married, you got to be prepared to submit to your husband. I know it's hard to submit to a nigga, but that's not a nigga right there. That's an Israelite man, you're an Israelite woman. And that's another reason why women don't want to submit. I asked the sister earlier, do she want to get married? She said no. Why? Because it's hard to submit to a nigga. That's right. It's hard. It's impossible. It's hard to submit to a brother with his pants sagging. With a Gucci belt. So what? Who cares? Who cares? Do you have a job? Are you working? Can you take care of me? Can you provide for me? Are you stable? Can you keep a job longer than one year? These are things that people don't want to submit to. They don't want to submit to a nigga. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Unto your who? Unto your own husband. See that? Your own husband. Don't submit to another man. Don't have work husbands. Right. Don't have work wives. Don't be flirting at work. Don't be flirting where you at. Don't be flirting at all. You're supposed to submit to him. Your desire should be towards him. That's right. That's cheating, by the way, when you flirt. When you got DMs in your DMs, when you shoot DMs, that's flirt. When you send in pictures, that's that's uh, cheating, by the way. Why? Because you y'all supposed to submit to each. She's you supposed to submit to her. Y'all supposed to be one flesh. You're not being one flesh if you uh hitting up someone else DM. You're not being one flesh if a brother shoots you a DM and you want to entertain it. Good morning, beautiful. That's the number one thing they say. Good morning, beautiful. Hope you have a good day, beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. You cheated, by the way. Block. How about that? As unto the Lord. If you didn't know, now you know. For the husband is the head of the wife. So the woman's supposed to submit to the husband. Why? Because the husband is the head of the wife. I know it's hard for women... Nowadays to submit to, to submit to niggas, 
It's hard. But you got to submit to a godly man. A man of this Bible, a man of God. A man that's going to take care of you. Right? Come on. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Just like Christ is the head of the church, Christ is our Lord and Savior. Christ is our King. The same way we all submit to Christ is the same way that you're supposed to submit to your husband. Hold that. Let's get the order. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. This is the order right here because everything is a hierarchy. There's no such thing as 50-50. Because 50-50 in society means that the woman's on top and the man's on the bottom. There's no such thing as 50-50. It's no such thing as 50-50 because uh, last week we had Mother's Day. Let me see how many restaurants are packing on Father's Day. Zero. What last time you told your father Happy Father's Day? Last year. Last year but you t what about you? I'm sorry about that. But the point is, it's no 50-50. Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I will have you know. That the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man, regardless of man or woman, is Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. So the woman head is the the woman head is man. Come on. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. So you got the most high God, the heavenly father. You have his son, Jesus Christ. You have the man and the woman. That's the hierarchy right there. That's the order. Anything slips out up is out of order. You okay, sister? Why are you crying? Okay, good, good. Let's go back to uh, Ephesians. Let's go back there. I still can't get over that woman. We're talking about something that's going to fix our community, but I gave the woman a chance to speak. I got to go back there. She sounded like a fool. Our people are fools. We got to come back to what the Bible say. The Bible is the only thing that's going to restore our wisdom. Because for far too long, we've been misled. Been misled through this right here. This image right here. Bring it out. Jesus Christ. This is uh, a false image of Christ. Because guess what? When you think about it, who fills the black church? Women. You had Grandpa Dollar a few years back saying you could do bad all by yourself. He was telling the women in his church you could do bad all by yourself. How can you do bad all by yourself? The woman been doing too bad by She's been doing worse for far too long without the man in, with, on her side. But it's it's to the pastor's benefit to mislead the woman because why? Because they pay the pastor the most tithes. Because if if the husband was in there, he's like, hell no, you ain't giving them ten percent of nothing. They do that though. The man go to the ATM like, how come I uh, how come I had how come I'm missing a few bands? Oh, because she gave it to the pastor last Sunday. That's crazy. Come on, let's go back. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even well, again, the husband is the head of the wife. Read. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So it says, just like the man is subject to Christ, let the woman be subject to her husband in all things, according to God's laws. But that's why y'all must learn God's laws, right? You got to fly, you got to fly, right? It's a lot y'all got to learn. Marriage is important. Again, marriage is what uh, build, it's, it's the building blocks to rebuilding our nation. Because every nation starts at home. It starts with a man. It starts with a husband. It starts with a wife. Guess what? Raising the kids up. Raising the kids up. Because guess what? Everyone has a role in the house. The man is the provider. And the woman is the keeper at home. Is more? Yes, sir. Husbands, love your wives. Hear that? Husbands, love your wives. What's love? Let's get it. First John uh, 5 and 3. Because we've been, we've been, a long time we've been taught love was based on what BET said. We've been taught that love is going on blind dates. What? Getting roses. Come on. The book of First John, chapter 5. Verse 3. Bring it up. For this is the love of God. So this is love right here. Come on. That we keep his commandment. That we do what? That we keep his commandment. So love is cons consists of keeping God's commandments. Keeping God's commandments. That's love. That's why I we'll go back there. That's why it says when it says husbands love your wives. You're supposed to love her according to the Bible. If you truly love your wife, you're going to stick with her through thin, thick and thin. You're not going to commit adultery on her. You're not going to cheat on her. 
You're not going to slide in nobody's DMs. And you're not going to allow a woman to slide in your DM. You're going to shut it down. Come on. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Because you know what? Christ gave his life for us. Christ so, the, love, the Heavenly Father so loved the world that he gave his son to die for us. So the same way a man's supposed to die for his family. That's right. He's supposed to defend for his family. Die for his family. But guess what? That starts at home. Because guess what? If I'm going to die for my family, I'm going to die for my people. Come on, is it more? Verse 26. That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And that way, and that's how you sanctify the word of God, by doing what the word of God says and keeping his commandments. And again, marriage is a commandment. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 